peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Today, let us uh, reflect on the gospel according to Matthew chapter 18, verses 15 to 20. If your brother sins against you, if another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen, even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. So, my dear brothers and sisters, today, um, as we look at this Gospel passage, now we need to understand that this passage is between the, the passage which is on the sheep gone astray or the, or the lost sheep and the uh, and the parable of the unforgiving servant now what what happens in the the lost sheep the parable of the lost sheep there we see that the shepherd leaves the 99 99 aside and goes in search of the one that has gone astray and when the the one that has gone astray is found he is rejoicing. He is celebrating. On the on the uh, other side, when we look at the parable of the unforgiving servant, we see in that parable that the the word of God tells us that in Matthew eighteen thirty three, should you not have mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you. So here we see that. In, in the parables that is before and after, it is about the lost sheep, those who are lost, those who are gone astray, those who have been involved in, in offense. The Lord is the one who's telling us that we are called to go in search. We are called to be merciful. We are called to be forgiven. And likewise, in today's, today's account, the Lord is telling, if someone has done sin against you. Now, there are like, it looks like step one, step two, step three. Like you uh, speak to them one to one. You you take uh, one or two people and talk to them. You uh, involve the community, the church. Now, what should be the heart of the, the whole thing? When we are talking to them, when we are getting others engaged as witnesses or the church involved, is it so that that person is condemned? No, my dear brothers and sisters. The entire objective is that that brother is won back in love because in Christ, there is no condemnation. So we, we see that uh, in Galatians 5, 6, the word of God tells us that the only thing that counts is faith working through love. Now, when we say that faith working through love, now, how does that, what does that got to do with one or two or many talking to the person as a community? Now, the word of God tells us um, in the subsequent uh, verses about where two or three are gathered in my name, I am present. So my dear brothers and sisters, when we are um, speaking to those who have sinned against us, those who have offended us, in a spirit of community, 
we need to understand that in amidst that God himself, the Lord is with us. And who is Jesus? We know that God is love. So when, when we are communicating about the wrong that a fellow uh, brother may have done to us, and when we want to correct him, we are not called to go there to accuse or condemn him, but rather win him over with love. Because where two or three are gathered, Jesus said, I am amidst you. That means there is love amidst us. And faith works through love. When we understand how much God has loved us, how much God has been gracious to us, he has forgiven us, we have all been sinners. He came not for the righteous. He came but for the sinners so that we come to repentance as Luke 5.32 tells us. So Jesus did not come for the righteous. Let us know that we too have been sinners. We too fall. We have been sinners. And in the, in the future, we are going to fall. But praise be to God that his grace is available for us each time to come to him in repentance. So when someone is doing wrong to us, we are called to win over that brother so that we, we don't go to him uh, just so that we try to show his mistake. We try to put that person down because if we look at the word of God uh, in Colossians 3.13, it says, bear with one another. And if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other, just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. And when when you bear with one another, of course, um, correction is required. And we have to use the word because scripture is, is given to us to edify, to correct. But at the same time, this correction should not be in a manner that um, we go and put someone down or we try and condemn someone because as Colossians 3.14 tells us, above all, clothe yourselves with love. Love because it is love which binds everything together in perfect harmony. Um, the word of God uh, tells us that Jesus uh, said that um, if you speak, there is no change. If two or three speaks, but there is no change. If the community, the church speak, there is no change. Then you leave him as a as a, uh, a Gentile uh, or a tax collector. So my dear brothers and sisters, many times we may be faced with this situation that no matter what you do, you may find that when it is somebody else's mistake, you would have gone and apologized. You would have said sorry when it is not your mistake. And, and yet you see that there is no change. There is no repentance. And then the Lord says, leave him as a, as a uh, unbeliever, as a Gentile or a tax collector. Does it mean that uh, now you have got to do nothing with these people? No, my dear brothers and sisters, because we need to see how the Lord dealt with, dealt with uh, Gentiles, dealt with unbelievers, those who were uh, tax collectors. We know that the Lord called Matthew, who was a tax collector, to be his apostle. He went and dined with Zacchaeus, who was a tax collector. He embraced, he embraced them. He loved them. Even when it came to sinners, like the women uh, caught in the very act of adultery, they came. They brought the woman to Jesus so that they wanted to see how Jesus deals with her because she was caught in the very act of adultery. But Jesus said, um, neither do I condemn you. Go away and from now on sin, do not sin again. Even for the woman who, um, who met Jesus at, by the way, and the Samaritan woman, the Lord knew that what was her life, that she had five husbands. She was living with a sixth man who was not her husband. And yet the Lord says, if you had known who is the one who's talking to you? Then you would have said, give me uh, give me the drink. And he would have given you living water. So that means the Lord is showing us 
that whether it is tax collectors, sinners, unbelievers, we need to deal with these people out of love because God has made his mercy available for everyone. It is not for the righteous because none are righteous. So when his mercy is available for everyone, let us be merciful. Let us, let us learn how to approach and deal. And when we've done everything else, when we have done everything else and there is nothing which is within our means, then we are called to still continue to love them. And maybe that love may not be a continual expression in words, but we can, we can pray for them. We can bless them. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. So let us close with a thanksgiving prayer. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. God, a loving Father, we thank you, we praise you, we give you glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Whilst we were still sinners, while, whilst we were yet sinners, you died, Lord. Because it is God's plan that none perishes. And the way that was made for our salvation was by your death on the cross where sinless blood was shed, your life was given up for our salvation. Lord, you are love and you have called us to love. You have called us to a relationship with you and not only with you, you have called us to have a relationship with our brothers and sisters. Lord Jesus, Holy Spirit of God, help us that when our brothers and sisters do us wrong, that we do not condemn them, that the attempt should be to win them over for Christ, to win them over with love. Let us not be offended in them, rather bless them and pray for them so that they too, seeing the light of Christ in us, come to you in repentance and are saved. We make this prayer in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ for joining today. So we meet again on Friday. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus.